Network, Brian Buckmeyer, joining me now live for more on this. All right, Brian, what can we expect from the closing arguments today, and, and which side do you feel has won over the jury so far? Right. So when it comes to closing arguments in California, the prosecution gets a bit of an advantage in that they get to go first, then the defense, then they get to rebut. So far, the prosecution's already done 75 minutes of their beginning closing argument, and the defense got cut short, but they're going to continue again today. What I expect is the defense to play both offense and defense in their arguments to try to push back on the narrative of the prosecution, them being the argument that it's a clear as day. Believe Megan Thee Stallion and the obvious connections, and it's that Tory Lanez shot or shot at Megan Thee Stallion. For the defense, they're going to say, hey, there are too many stories here. There's too much chaos here. You can't believe any one story here. And that confusion bodes well for the defense because as the prosecution has to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt, I think it means a little bit more to the defense in this case. All right. Well, look, as we just heard in Stephanie's piece uh, earlier this week, a neighbor who witnessed the shooting testified for the defense. Did his testimony paint a better picture of what exactly happened that night or did it just add to the confusion? I think it adds to the confusion. Better maybe depending on who you think is right in this case, because he adds another narrative that I can see the defense jumping on, where he's saying that he saw the two women arguing, he believes that at least the initial shot came from a female, and then Tory Lanez is shooting everywhere, not necessarily down at the ground, but everywhere. So a defense can jump on that and say, hey, Kelsey shot at uh, Megan Thee Stallion, and then Tory took the gun and trying to break it apart. Or you could say that this person missaw what they saw, and, and it didn't happen the way it occurred. Or you can jump and say, hey, him shooting everywhere, one of those shots, or two of those shots, or whatever it may be, we're at Megan the Stallion. Again, you just got another set of narratives, not really knowing one fact being more important than the other. All right. And finally, what about Megan's bodyguard who has apparently vanished before he was expected to testify? I mean, what do you make of that? This is a huge step back for the prosecution and a huge win for the defense because. The defense will tell you, and every defense attorney will tell you, it's not their job to put on a case. It's their job to poke holes in the case. And when you have the recipient of this text message that says 911, Megan got shot, that, that's huge evidence that's supposed to corroborate uh, Megan the Stallion's uh, case. But when that falls apart and that witness doesn't come forward, the defense gets to kind of poke holes and say, well, why didn't he show up? What would he have said if he did take this? And it really pulls apart at the prosecution's case when they promised so much at the beginning. Brian Buckmeyer, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure.